prayer and repentance from hamlet act three scene three by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator and jason in canada as the king prayer and repentance from hamlet act three scene three oh my offence is rank it smells to heaven it hath the primal eldest curse upon it a brother's murder pray can i not though inclination be as sharp as will my stronger guilt defeats my strong intent and like a man to double business bound i stand in pause where i shall first begin and both neglect what if this cursed hand were thicker than itself with brother's blood is there not rain enough in the sweet heavens to wash it white as snow whereto serves mercy but to confront the visage of offence and what's in prayer but this twofold force to be forestalled ere we come to fall or pardoned being down then i'll look up my fault is past but oh what form of prayer can serve my turn forgive me my foul murder that cannot be since i am still possessed of those effects for which i did the murder my crown mine own ambition and my queen may one be pardoned and retain the offence in the corrupted currents of this world offence's gilded hand may shove by justice and oft tis seen the wicked prize itself buys out the law but tis not so above there is no shuffling there the action lies in his true nature and we ourselves compelled even to the teeth and forehead of our faults to give in evidence what then what rests try what repentance can what can it not yet what can it when one cannot repent o oh, wretched state o oh, bosom black as death o oh, limed soul that struggling to be free art more engaged help angels make a say bow stubborn knees and heart with strings of steel be soft as sinews of the newborn babe all may be well retires and kneels king rising my words fly up my thoughts remain below words without thoughts never to heaven go end of poem this recording is in the public domain the caliph and satan by james freeman clark from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin as the narrator thomas peter as satan and jason in canada as the caliph the caliph and satan versified from tholuck's translation out of the persian in heavy sleep the caliph lay when some one called and pray the angry caliph cried who dare rebuke his king for slighting prayer then from the corner of the room a voice cut sharply through the gloom my name is satan rise obey mohammed's law awake and pray thy words are good the caliph said but their intent i somewhat dread for matters cannot well be worse than when the thief says guard your purse i cannot trust your counsel friend it surely hides some wicked end said satan near the throne of god in ages past we devils trod angels of light to us twas given to guide each wandering foot to heaven not wholly lost is that first love 
nor those pure tastes we knew above roaming across a continent the tartar moves his shifting tent but never quite forgets the day when in his father's arms he lay so we once bathed in love divine recall the taste of that rich wine god's finger rested on my brow that magic touch i feel it now i fell tis true oh ask not why for still to god i turn my eye it was a chance by which i fell another takes me back from hell twas but my envy of mankind the envy of a loving mind jealous of men i could not bear god's love with this new race to share but yet god's tables open stand his guests flock in from every land some kind act towards the race of men may toss us into heaven again a game of chess is all we see and god the player pieces we white black queen pawn tis all the same for on both sides he plays the game moved to and fro from good to ill we rise and fall as suits his will the caliph said if this be so i know not but thy guile i know for how can i thy words believe when even god thou didst deceive a sea of lies art thou our sin only a drop that sea within not so said satan i serve god his angel now and now his rod in tempting i both bless and curse make good men better bad men worse good coin is mixed with bad my brother i but distinguish one from the other granted the caliph said but still you never tempt to good but ill tell then the truth for well i know you come as my most deadly foe loud laughed the fiend you know me well therefore my purpose i will tell if you had missed your prayer i knew a swift repentance would ensue and such repentance would have been a good outweighing far the sin i chose this humbleness divine born out of fault should not be thine preferring prayers elate with pride to sin with penitence allied end of poem this recording is in the public domain darkness is thinning from the latin of saint gregory the great translation of john mason neal from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin darkness is thinning darkness is thinning shadows are retreating morning and light are coming in their beauty suppliant seek we with an earnest outcry god the almighty so that our master having mercy on us may repel languor may bestow salvation granting us father of thy loving kindness glory hereafter this of his mercy ever blessed godhead father and son and holy spirit give us whom through the wide world celebrate for ever blessing and glory end of poem this recording is in the public domain praise by george herbert from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox.org by lian yao 
praise to write a verse or two is all the praise that i can raise mend my estate in any ways thou shalt have more i go to church help me to wings and i will thither fly or if i mount unto the sky i will do more man is all weakness there is no such thing as prince or king his arm is short yet with a sling he may do more a herb distilled and drunk may dwell next door on the same floor to a brave soul exhort the poor they can do more o oh, raise me then poor bees that work all day sting my delay who have a work as well as they and much much more end of poem this recording is in the public domain Prayer, translated from Mary, Queen of Hungary, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Prayer. O God, though sorrow be my fate, and the world's hate, for my heart's faith pursue me, my peace they cannot take away, from day to day, thou dost anew imbue me thou art not far a little while thou hidst thy face with brighter smile thy father love to show me lord not my will but thine be done if i sink down when men to terrors leave me thy father love still warms my breast all's for the best shall men have power to grieve me when bliss eternal is my goal and thou the keeper of my soul who never will deceive me Thou art my shield, as saith the word, Christ Jesus, Lord, thou standest pitying by me, and lookest on each grief of mine, and if twere thine, what then? Though foes may try me, though thorns be in my path concealed, world, do thy worst, God is my shield, and will be ever nigh me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Desire by Matthew Arnold From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Desire Thou, who dost dwell alone Thou, who dost know thine own Thou, to whom all are known, From the cradle to the grave, Save, oh, save. From the world's temptations, From tribulations, From that fierce anguish Wherein we languish, From that torpor deep Wherein we lie asleep, Heavy as death, Cold as the grave, Save, Oh, save. When the soul, growing clearer, Sees God no nearer, When the soul, mounting higher, To God comes no nigher, But the arch-fiend pride Mounts at her side, Foiling her high emprise, Sealing her eagle eyes, And when she fain would soar, Make idols to adore, Changing the pure emotion of her high devotion To a skin-deep sense of her own eloquence, Strong to deceive, strong to enslave, Save, oh, save, From the ingrained fashion of this earthly nature That mars thy creature, From grief that is but passion, From mirth that is but feigning, from tears that bring no healing, From wild and weak complaining, Thine old strength revealing, Save, O oh, save. From doubt where all is double, Where wise men are not strong, Where comfort turns to trouble, Where just men suffer wrong, Where sorrow treads on joy, Where sweet things soonest cloy, 
where faiths are built on dust where love is half mistrust hungry and barren and sharp as the sea oh set us free oh let the false dream fly where our sick souls do lie tossing continually oh where thy voice doth come let all doubts be dumb let all words be mild all strife be reconciled all pains beguiled light brings no blindness love no unkindness knowledge no ruin fear no undoing from the cradle to the grave save oh save end of poem this recording is in the public domain why thus longing by harriet winslow sewell from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia why thus longing why thus longing thus forever sighing for the far off unattained and dim while the beautiful all round thee lying offers up its low perpetual hymn wouldst thou listen to its gentle teaching all thy restless yearnings it would still leaf and flower and laden bee are preaching thine own sphere though humble first to fill poor indeed thou must be if around thee thou no ray of light and joy canst throw if no silken cord of love hath bound thee to some little world through weal and woe if no dear eyes thy fond love can brighten no fond voices answer to thine own if no brother's sorrow thou canst lighten by daily sympathy and gentle tone not by deeds that win the crowd's applauses not by works that gain thee world renown not by martyrdom or vaunted crosses canst thou win and wear the immortal crown daily struggling though unloved and lonely every day a rich reward will give thou wilt find by hearty striving only and truly loving thou canst truly live dost thou revel in the rosy morning when all nature hails the lord of light and his smile the mountain tops adorning robes yon fragrant fields in radiance bright other hands may grasp the field and forest proud proprietors in pomp may shine but with fervent love if thou adorest thou art wealthier all the world is thine yet if through earth's wide domains thou rovest sighing that they are not thine alone not those fair fields but thyself thou lovest and their beauty and thy wealth are gone nature wears the colour of the spirit sweetly to her worshipper she sings all the glow the grace she doth inherit round her trusting child she fondly flings end of poem this recording is in the public domain prayer and answer by oliver huckle from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by jason in canada prayer and answer o god i cannot walk the way the thorns the thirst the darkness and bleeding feet and aching heart i hear the songs and revels of the throng they sneer upon my downcast face with scorn yet o oh my god i must and shall walk with thee o oh god i cannot take the truth far easier honeyed hopes and falsehoods fair but truth the truth is stern and strong and awful it ploughs my soul with ploughshares flaming hot yet give me truth i must have truth o oh god o oh god i cannot live the life 
the flinging all to death that life may come the surging of thy spirit in my heart in fire and flame will all consume me yet o oh my god i cannot live without thee and as i agonized in dust and shame with tears and sighs and all the bitter prayer i felt as it were an arm that stole around me and raised me to my feet and at the touch hope blossomed in my heart and new-found strength in flood-tides thrilled and throbbed through soul and limbs i looked to see o oh, tender lordly face it was himself the way the truth the life oliver huckle end of poem this recording is in the public domain the aim by charles g d roberts from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the aim o thou who lovest not alone the swift success the instant goal but hast the lenient eye to mark the failures of the inconstant soul consider not my little worth the mean achievement scamped in act the high resolve and low result the dream that durst not face the fact but count the reach of my desire let this be something in thy sight i have not in the slothful dark forgot the vision and the height neither my body nor my soul to earth low ease will yield consent i praise thee for my will to strive i bless thy goad of discontent end of poem this recording is in the public domain the love of god supreme by gerhard terstegen translated from german by john wesley from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the love of god supreme thou hidden love of god whose height whose depth unfathomed no man knows i see from far thy beauteous light inly i sigh for thy repose my heart is pained nor can it be at rest till it finds rest in thee thy secret voice invites me still the sweetness of thy yoke to prove and fain i would but though my will be fixed yet wide my passions rove yet hindrances strew all the way i aim at thee yet from thee stray tis mercy all that thou hast brought my mind to seek her peace in thee yet while i seek but find thee not no peace my wandering soul shall see o oh, when shall all my wanderings end and all my steps to thee would tend is there a thing beneath the sun that strives with thee my heart to share ah tear it thence and reign alone the lord of every motion there then shall my heart from earth be free when it has found repose in thee o oh, hide this self from me that i no more but christ in me may live my vile affections crucify nor let one darling lust survive in all things nothing may i see nothing desire or seek but thee o oh, love thy sovereign aid impart to save me from low-thoughted care chase this self-will through all my heart through all its latent mazes there make me thy duteous child that i ceaseless may abba father cry ah no never will i backward turn thine holy thine alone i am thrice happy he who views with scorn earth's toys for thee his constant flame o oh, help that i may never move from the blessed footsteps of thy love each moment draw from earth away my heart that lowly waits thy call speak to my inmost soul and say i am thy love thy god 
thy all to feel thy power to hear thy voice to taste thy love is all my choice end of poem this recording is in the public domain in a lecture room by arthur hugh clough from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter in a lecture room away haunt thou not me thou vain philosophy little hast thou bestead save to perplex the head and leave the spirit dead unto thy broken cisterns wherefore go while from the secret treasure depths below fed by the sky's shower and clouds that sink and rest on hilltops high wisdom at once and power are welling bubbling forth unseen incessantly why labor at the dull mechanic oar when the fresh breeze is blowing and the strong current flowing right onward to the eternal shore End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From the Recesses of a Lowly Spirit by Sir John Bowring. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. From the Recesses of a Lowly Spirit. From the recesses of a lowly spirit, our humble prayer ascends, O Father, hear it. Up soaring on the wings of awe and meekness, forgive its weakness. We see thy hand, it leads us, it supports us. We hear thy voice, it counsels and it courts us. And then we turn away, and still thy kindness forgives our blindness. O how long suffering, Lord! But thou delightest to win with love the wandering thou invited by smiles of mercy, not by frowns or terrors, man from his errors. Father and Saviour, plant within each bosom the seeds of holiness and bid them blossom in fragrance and in beauty bright and vernal and spring eternal. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Higher Good by Theodore Parker From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao The Higher Good Father, I will not ask for wealth or fame, Though once they would have joyed my carnal sense, I shudder not to bear a hated name, Wanting all wealth, myself my sole defence. But give me, Lord, eyes to behold the truth, A seeing sense that knows the eternal right, A heart with pity filled and gentlest ruth, A manly faith that makes all darkness light. Give me the power to labour for mankind, Make me the mouth of such as cannot speak, Eyes let me be to groping men and blind, a conscience to the base and to the weak let me be hands and feet and to the foolish mind and lead still further on such as thy kingdom seek end of poem this recording is in the public domain ascription by charles g d roberts from the world's best poetry volume 4 the higher life Part One, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter. Ascription. O thou who hast beneath thy hand, the dark foundations of the land, the motion of whose ordered thought, an instant universe hath wrought, who hast within thine equal heed the rolling sun, the ripening seed, the azure of the speedwell's eye the vast solemnities of sky 
who hears no less the feeble note of one small bird's awakening throat than that unnamed tremendous chord arcturus sounds before his lord more sweet to thee than all acclaim of storm and ocean stars and flame in favour more before thy face than pageantry of time and space the worship and the service be of him thou madest most like thee who in his nostrils hath thy breath whose spirit is the lord of death end of poem this recording is in the public domain O oh master let me walk with thee by washington gladden from the world's best poetry volume four how the higher life part one read for librivox.org by lian yao O oh master let me walk with thee O oh master let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free tell me thy secret help me bear the strain of toil the fret of care help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love teach me the wayward feet to stay and guide them in the homeward way o oh, master let me walk with thee before the taunting pharisee help me to bear the sting of spite the hate of men who hide thy light the sore distrust of souls sincere who cannot read thy judgments clear the dullness of the multitude who dimly guess that thou art good teach me thy patience still with thee in closer dearer company in work that keeps faith sweet and strong in trust that triumphs over wrong in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way in peace that only thou canst give with thee o master let me live end of poem this recording is in the public domain Faith by George Santayana From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Faith O world, thou choosest not the better part. It is not wisdom to be only wise And on the inward vision close the eyes, But it is wisdom to believe the heart. Columbus found a world and had no chart save one that faith deciphered in the skies to trust the soul's invincible surmise was all his science and his only art our knowledge is a torch of smoky pine that lights the pathway but one step ahead across a void of mystery and dread bid then the tender light of faith to shine by which alone the mortal heart is led unto the thinking of the thought divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fight of Faith by Anne Askew From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia the fight of faith the author of this poem one of the victims of the persecuting henry the eighth was burned to death at smithfield in fifteen forty six it was made and sung by her while a prisoner in newgate like as the armed knighter appointed to the field with this world will i fight and faith shall be my shield faith is that weapon strong which will not fail at need my foes therefore among therewith will i proceed as it is head in strength and forces of christ's way it will prevail at length though all the devils say nay faith of the fathers old obtain it right witness which makes me very bold to fear no world's distress i now rejoice in heart 
and hope bites me do so for christ will take my part and ease me of my woe thou sayst lord who so knocke to them wilt thou attend undo therefore the lock and thy strong power send more enemies now i have than hairs upon my head let them not me deprave but fight thou in my stead on thee my care i cast for all their cruel spite i set not by their hast for thou art my delight i am not she that list my anchor to let fall for every drizzling mist my ship's substantial not oft i used to write in prose nor yet in rhyme yet will i show one sight that i saw in my time i saw a royal throne where justice should have sit but in her stead was one of moody cruel wit absorbed was right witness as by the raging flood satan in his excess sucked up the guiltless blood then thought i jesus lord when thou shalt judge us all hard is it to record on these men what will fall yet lord i thee desire for that they do to me let them not taste the higher of their iniquity end of poem this recording is in the public domain doubt and faith from in memoriam 95 by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume 4 the higher life part 1 read for librivox.org by thomas peter doubt and faith from in memoriam 95 you say but with no touch of scorn sweethearted you whose light blue eyes are tender over drowning flies you tell me doubt is devil born i know not one indeed i knew in many a subtle question versed who touched a jarring lyre at first but ever strove to make it true perplexed in faith but pure in deeds at last he beat his music out there lives more faith in honest doubt believe me than in half the creeds he fought his doubts and gathered strength he would not make his judgment blind he faced the spectres of the mind and laid them thus he came at length to find a stronger faith his own and power was with him in the night which makes the darkness and the light and wells not in the light alone but in the darkness and the cloud as over sinai's peaks of old while israel made their gods of gold although the trumpet blew so loud end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Times Are in Thy Hand by Christopher Newman Hall From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin My Times Are in Thy Hand My Times Are in Thy Hand I know not what a day or e'en an hour may bring to me But I am safe while trusting Thee though all things fade away all weakness i on him rely who fixed the earth and spread the starry sky my times are in thy hand pale poverty or wealth corroding care or calm repose spring's balmy breath or winter's snows sickness or buoyant health whate'er betide if god provide tis for the best i wish no lot beside my times are in thy hand should friendship pure illume and strew my path with fairest flowers or should i spend life's dreary hours 
in solitude's dark gloom thou art a friend till time shall end unchangeably the same in thee all beauties blend my times are in thy hand many or few my days i leave with thee this only pray that by thy grace i every day devoting to thy praise may ready be to welcome thee when e'er thou comes to set my spirit free my times are in thy hand howe'er those times may end sudden or slow my soul's release midst anguish frenzy or in peace i'm safe with christ my friend if he is nigh howe'er i die twill be the dawn of heavenly ecstasy my times are in thy hand to thee i can entrust my slumbering clay till thy command bids all the dead before thee stand awaking from the dust beholding thee what bliss twill be with all thy saints to spend eternity to spend eternity in heaven's unclouded light from sorrow sin and frailty free beholding and resembling thee o oh, too transporting sight prospect too fair for flesh to bear haste haste my lord and soon transport me there end of poem this recording is in the public domain a mystical ecstasy by francis qualls from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia a mystical ecstasy even like two little bank dividing brooks that wash the pebbles with their wanton streams and having ranged and searched a thousand nooks meet both at length in silver breasted thames where in a greater current they conjoin so i my best beloved's am so he is mine even so we met and after long pursuit even so we joined we both became entire no need for either to renew a suit for i was flex and he was flames of fire our firm united souls did more than twine so i my best beloved's am so he is mine if all those glittering monarchs that command the servile quarters of this earthly ball should tender in exchange their shares of land i would not change my fortunes for them all their wealth is but a counter to my coin the world's but theirs but my beloved's mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mystic's vision by matilde blind from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter the mystic's vision ah i shall kill myself with dreams these dreams that softly lap me round through trance-like hours in which me seems that i am swallowed up and drowned drowned in your love which flows o'er me as o'er the seaweed flows the sea in watches of the middle night twixt vesper and twixt matin bell with rigid arms and straining sight i wait within my narrow cell with muttered prayers suspended will i wait your advent statue still across the convent garden walls the wind blows from the silver seas black shadow of the cypress falls between the moon meshed olive trees sleep walking from their golden bowers flit disembodied orange flowers and in god's consecrated house all motionless from head to feet my heart awaits her heavenly spouse as white i lie on my white sheet with body lulled and soul awake 
I watch in anguish for your sake. And suddenly, across the gloom, the naked moonlight sharply swings. A presence stirs within the room. A breath of flowers and hovering wings. Your presence without form and void, beyond all earthly joys enjoyed. My heart is hushed, my tongue is mute, my life is centered in your will. You play upon me like a lute, which answers to its master's skill, till passionately vibrating, each nerve becomes a throbbing string. Oh, incommunicably sweet, no longer aching and apart. As rain upon the tender wheat You pour upon my thirsty heart. As scent is bound up in the rose, Your love within my bosom glows. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Call by George Herbert from the world's best poetry volume four the high life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao the call come my way my truth my life such a way as gives us breath such a truth as ends all strife such a life as killeth death come my light my feast my strength such a light as shows a feast such a feast as men's in length such a strength as makes his guest. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hope. From the Pleasures of Hope by thomas campbell from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin hope footnote this poem was written when the author was but twenty-one years of age unfading hope when life's last embers burn when soul to soul and dust to dust return heaven to thy charge resigns the awful hour o oh, then thy kingdom comes immortal power what though each spark of earth-born rapture fly the quivering lip pale cheek and closing eye bright to the soul thy seraph hands convey the morning dream of life's eternal day then then the triumph and the trance begin and all the phoenix spirit burns within daughter of faith awake arise illume the dread unknown the chaos of the tomb melt and dispel ye spectre doubts that roll cimmerian darkness o'er the parting soul fly like the moon-eyed herald of dismay chased on his night steed by the star of day the strife is o'er the pangs of nature close and life's last rapture triumphs o'er her woes hark as the spirit's eyes with eagle gaze the noon of heaven undazzled by the blaze on heavenly winds that waft her to the sky float the sweet tones of star-born melody wild as that hallowed anthem sent to hail bethlehem shepherds in the lonely vale when jordan hushed his waves and midnight still watched on the holy towers of zion hill eternal hope when yonder spheres sublime pealed their first notes to sound the march of time thy joyous youth began but not to fade when all the sister planets have decayed when wrapped in fire the realms of ether glow and heaven's last thunder shakes the world below thou undismayed shalt o'er the ruin smile and light thy torch at nature's funeral pile 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Query by Edmund Whitehead Howson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia A Query Oh, the wonder of our life! Pain and pleasure, rest and strife, Mystery of mysteries, Set twixt two eternities. Lo, the moments come and go, Even as sparks, and vanish so flash from darkness into light quick as thought are quenched in night with an import grand and strange are they fraught in ceaseless change as they post away each one stands eternally alone the scene more fair than words can say i gaze upon and go my way i turn another glance to claim something is changed tis not the same the purple flush on yonder fell the tinkle of that kettle bell came and have never come before go and are gone for evermore our life is held as with a vice we cannot do the same thing twice once we may but not again only memories remain what if memories vanish too and the past be lost to view is it all for naught that i heard and saw and hurried by where are childhood's merry hours bright with sunshine crossed with showers are they dead and can they never come again to life for ever no tis false i surely trow though awhile they vanish now every passion deed and thought was not born to come to naught will the past then come again rest and pleasure strife and pain all the heaven and all the hell ah we know not god can tell end of poem this recording is in the public domain humility by james montgomery from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao humility the bird that soars on highest wing builds on the ground her lowly nest and she that doth most sweetly sing sings in the shade where all things rest in lark and nightingale we see what honour hath humility when mary chose the better part she meekly sat at jesus's feet and lydia's gently opened heart was made for god's own temple meet fairest and best adorned is she whose clothing is humility the saint that wears heaven's brightest crown in deepest adoration bends the weight of glory bows him down than most when most his soul ascends nearest to the throne itself must be the footstool of humility. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. King Robert of Sicily by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4, The Higher Life, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator. Thomas Peter as the priests the sexton and the monks craig franklin as king robert jason in canada as the clerk the men-at-arms and the emperor and lian yao as the angel king robert of sicily robert of sicily brother of pope urbane and valmond emperor of alamein apparelled in magnificent attire with retinue of many a knight and squire on st john's eve at vespers proudly set and heard the priest chant the magnificat and as he listened over and over again repeated like a burden or refrain he caught the words
and slowly lifting up his kingly head he to a learned clerk beside him said what mean these words the clerk made answer meet he has put down the mighty from their seat and has exalted them of low degree thereat king robert muttered scornfully tis well that such seditious words are sung only by priests and in the latin tongue for unto priests and people be it known there is no power can push me from my throne and leaning back he yawned and fell asleep lulled by the chant monotonous and deep when he awoke it was already night the church was empty and there was no light save where the lamps that glimmered few and faint lighted a little space before some saint he started from his seat and gazed around but saw no living thing and heard no sound he groped it towards the door but it was locked he cried aloud and listened and then knocked and uttered awful threatenings and complaints and imprecations upon men and saints the sounds re-echoed from the roof and walls as if dead priests were laughing in their stalls at length the sexton hearing from without the tumult of the knocking and the shout and thinking thieves were in the house of prayer came with his lantern asking who is there half choked with rage king robert fiercely said open tis i the king art thou afraid the frightened sexton muttering with a curse this is some drunken vagabond or worse turned the great key and flung the portal wide a man rushed by him at a single stride haggard half naked without hat or cloak who neither turned nor looked at him nor spoke but leaped into the blackness of the night and vanished like a spectre from his sight robert of sicily brother of pope urbane and valmont emperor of alamein the spoiled of his magnificent attire bareheaded breathless and besprent with mire with sense of wrong and outrage desperate strode on and thundered at the palace gate thrusting in his rage to right and left each seneschal and page and hurried up the broad and sounding stair his white face ghastly in the torches glare from hall to hall he passed with breathless speed voices and cries he heard but did not heed until at last he reached the banquet room blazing with light and breathing with perfume there on the dice sat another king wearing his robes his crown his signet ring king robert's self in features form and height but all transfigured with angelic light it was an angel and his presence there with a divine effulgence filled the air an exaltation piercing the disguise though none the hidden angel recognize a moment speechless motionless amazed the throneless monarch on the angel gazed who met his looks of anger and surprise with the divine compassion of his eyes then said who art thou and why comest thou here to which king robert answered with a sneer i am the king and come to claim my own from an impostor who usurps my throne and suddenly at these audacious words up sprang the angry guests and drew their swords the angel answered with unruffled brow nay not the king but the king's jester thou henceforth shalt wear the bells and scalloped cape and for thy counsellor shalt lead an ape thou shalt obey my servants when they call and wait upon my henchmen in the hall deaf to king robert's threats and cries and prayers they thrust him from the hall and down the stairs a group of tittering pages ran before and as they opened wide the folding door his heart failed for he heard with strange alarms the boisterous laughter of the men-at-arms and all the vaulted chamber roar and ring with the mock plaudits of long live the king next morning waking with the day's first beam he said within himself it was a dream but the straw rustled as he turned his head 
there were the cap and bells beside his bed around him rose the bare discoloured walls close by the steeds were champing in their stalls and in the corner a revolting shape shivering and chattering sat the wretched ape it was no dream the world he loved so much had turned to dust and ashes at his touch days came and went and now returned again to sicily the old saturnian reign under the angel's governance benign the happy island danced with corn and wine and deep within the mountain's burning breast enceladus the giant was at rest meanwhile king robert yielded to his fate sullen and silent and disconsolate dressed in the motley garb that jesters wear with looks bewildered and a vacant stare close shaven above the ears as monks are shorn by courtiers mocked by pages laughed to scorn his only friend the ape his only food what others left he still was unsubdued and when the angel met him on his way and half in earnest half in jest would say sternly though tenderly that he might feel the velvet scabbard held a sword of steel art thou the king the passion of his woe burst from him in resistless overflow and lifting high his forehead he would fling the haughty answer back i am i am the king almost three years were ended when there came ambassadors of great repute and name from valmont emperor of alamein unto king robert saying that pope urbane by letter summoned them forthwith to come on holy thursday to his city of rome the angel with great joy received his guests and gave them presents of embroidered vests and velvet mantles with rich ermine lined and rings and jewels of the rarest kind then he departed with them over the sea into the lovely land of italy whose loveliness was more resplendent made by the mere passing of that cavalcade with plumes and cloaks and housings and the stir of jewelled bridle and of golden spur and lo among the menials in mock state upon a piebald steed with shambling gait his cloak of foxtails flapping in the wind the solemn ape demurely perched behind king robert rode making huge merriment in all the country towns through which they went the pope received them with great pomp and blare of banner trumpets on st peter's square giving his benediction and embrace fervent and full of apostolic grace while with congratulations and with prayers he entertained the angel unawares robert the jester bursting through the crowd into their presence rushed and cried aloud i am the king look and behold in me robert your brother king of sicily this man who wears my semblance to your eyes is an impostor in a king's disguise do you not know me does no voice within answer my cry and say we are akin the pope in silence but with troubled mien gazed at the angel's countenance serene the emperor laughing said it is strange sport to keep a madman for thy fool at court and the poor baffled jester in disgrace was hustled back among the populace in solemn state the holy week went by and easter sunday gleamed upon the sky the presence of an angel with its light before the sun rose made the city bright and with new fervour filled the hearts of men who felt that christ indeed had risen again even the jester on his bed of straw with haggard eyes the unwonted splendour saw he felt within a power unfelt before and kneeling humbly on his chamber floor he heard the rustling garments of the lord sweep through the silent air ascending heavenward and now the visit ending and once more valmont returning to the danube's shore homeward the angel journeyed and again the land was made resplendent with his train flashing along the towns of italy unto salerno and from there by sea and when once more within palermo's wall 
and seated on his throne in his great hall he heard the angelus from convent towers as if the better world conversed with ours he beckoned to king robert to draw nigher and with a gesture bade the rest retire and when they were alone the angel said art thou the king then bowing down his head king robert crossed both hands upon his breast and meekly answered him thou knowest best my sins as scarlet are let me go hence and in some cloistered school of penitence across those stones that pave the way to heaven walk barefoot till my guilty soul is shriven the angel smiled and from his radiant face a holy light illumined all the place and through the open window loud and clear they heard the monks chant in the chapel near above the stir and tumult of the street he has put down the mighty from their seat and has exalted them of low degree and through the chant a second melody rose like the throbbing of a single string i am an angel and thou art the king king robert who was standing near the throne lifted his eyes and lo he was alone but all apparelled as in days of old with ermined mantle and with cloth of gold and when his courtiers came they found him there kneeling upon the floor absorbed in silent prayer end of poem this recording is in the public domain Service from Pippa Passes by Robert Browning From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Service from Pippa Passes All service ranks the same with God If now, as formerly he trod Paradise, his presence fills our earth each only as God wills can work. God's puppets, best and worst, are we. There is no last nor first. Say not a small event, why small? Costs it more pain than this, ye call a great event, should come to pass than that. Untwine me from the mass of deeds which make up life one deed power shall fall short in or exceed end of poem this recording is in the public domain the two angels by john greenleaf whittier from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for LibriVox.org by sonia as the narrator and craig franklin as god the two angels god called the nearest angels who dwell with him above the tenderest one was pity the dearest one was love arise he said my angels a wail of woe and sin steals through the gates of heaven and saddens all within my harps take up the mournful strain that from a lost world swells the smoke of torment clouds the light and blights the asphodels fly downward to that underworld and on its souls of pain let love drop smiles like sunshine and pity tears like rain two faces bowed before the throne veiled in their golden hair four white wings lessen swiftly down the dark abyss of air the way was strange the flight was long at last the angels came where swung the lost and nether world red wrapped in rayless flame there pity shuddering wept but love with faith too strong for fear took heart from god's almightiness and smiled a smile of cheer and lo that tear of pity quenched the flame whereon it fell and with the sunshine of that smile hope 
entered into hell two unveiled faces full of joy looked upward to the throne four white wings folded at the feet of him who sat thereon and deeper than the sound of seas more soft than falling flake amidst the hush of wing and song the voice eternal spake welcome my angels ye have brought a holier joy to heaven henceforth its sweetest song shall be the song of sin forgiven end of poem this recording is in the public domain the self-exiled by walter c smith from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator thomas peter as saint peter lian yao as the maid and craig franklin as god the self-exiled there came a soul to the gate of heaven gliding slow a soul that was ransomed and forgiven and white as snow and the angels all were silent a mystic light beamed from the face of the radiant maid but there also lay on its tender grace a mystic shade and the angels all were silent as sunlit clouds by a zephyr borne seem not to stir so to the golden gates of morn they carried her and the angels all were silent now open the gate and let her in and fling it wide for she has been cleansed from stain of sin st peter cried and the angels all were silent though i am cleansed from stain of sin she answered low i came not hither to enter in nor may i go and the angels all were silent i come she said to the pearly door to see the throne where sits the lamb on the sapphire floor with god alone and the angels all were silent i come to hear the new song they sing to him that died and note where the healing waters spring from his pierced side and the angels all were silent but i may not enter there she said for i must go across the gulf where the guilty dead lie in their woe and the angels all were silent if i enter heaven i may not pass to where they be though the wail of their bitter pain alas tormenteth me and the angels all were silent if i enter heaven i may not speak my soul's desire for them that are lying distraught and weak in flaming fire and the angels all were silent i had a brother and also another whom i loved well what if in anguish they curse each other in the depths of hell and the angels all were silent how could i touch the golden harps when all my praise would be so wrought with griefful warps of their sad days and the angels all were silent how love the loved who are sorry and yet be glad how sing the songs ye are fain to sing while i am sad and the angels all were silent o oh, clear as glass in the golden street of the city fair and the tree of life it maketh sweet the lightsome air and the angels all were silent and the white robed saints with their crowns and palms are good to see and oh so grand are the sounding psalms but not for me and the angels all were silent i come where there is no night she said to go away and help if i yet may help the dead that have no day and the angels all were silent st peter he turned the keys about and answered grim can you love the lord and abide without afar from him and the angels all were silent can you love the lord who died for you and leave the place where his glory is all disclosed to view and tender grace 
and the angels all were silent they go not out to come in here it were not meet nothing they lack for he is here and bliss complete and the angels all were silent should i be nearer christ she said by pitying less the sinful living or woeful dead in their helplessness and the angels all were silent should i be like a christ were i to love no more the loved who in their anguish lie outside the door and the angels all were silent did he not hang on the cursed tree and bear its shame and clasp to his heart for love of me my guilt and blame and the angels all were silent should i be like her nearer him forgetting this singing all day with the seraphim in selfish bliss and the angels all were silent the lord himself stood by the gate and heard her speak those tender words compassionate gentle and meek and the angels all were silent now pity is the touch of god in human hearts and from that way he ever trod he never departs and the angels all were silent and he said now will i go with you dear child of love i am weary of all this glory too in heaven above and the angels all were silent we will go seek and save the lost if they will hear they who are worst but need me most and all are dear and the angels were not silent end of poem this recording is in the public domain sympathy from ion act one scene two by sir thomas noon talford from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Sympathy from Ion, Act One, Scene Two. Tis a little thing to give a cup of water, yet its draught of cool refreshment, drained by fevered lips, may give a shock of pleasure to the frame more exquisite than when nectarian juice renews the life of joy in happier hours. It is a little thing to speak a phrase of common comfort, which by daily use has almost lost its sense, yet on the ear of him who thought to die unmourned, it will fall like choicest music, fill the glazing eye with gentle tears, relax the knotted hand to know the bonds of fellowship again, and shed on the departing soul a sense more precious than the benison of friends about the honoured deathbed of the rich to him who else were lonely that another of the great family is near and feels end of poem this recording is in the public domain sir galahad by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume four the Higher Life, Part One, read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Sir Galahad. My good blade carves the casks of men, my tough lance thrusteth sure, my strength is as the strength of ten, because my heart is pure. The shattering trumpet shrilleth high, the hard brands shiver on the steel. The splintered spear shafts crack and fly, the horse and rider reel, they reel, they roll in clanging lists, and when the tide of combat stands, perfume and flowers fall in showers that lightly rain from ladies' hands. How sweet are looks that ladies bend on whom their favours fall, for them my battle till the end to save from shame and thrall. But all my heart is drawn above, my knees are bowed in crypt and shrine, I never felt the kiss of love, nor maiden's hand in mine. 
more bounteous aspects on me beam me mightier transports move and thrill so keep i fair through faith and prayer a virgin heart in work and will when down the stormy crescent goes a light before me swims between dark stems the forest glows i hear a noise of hymns then by some secret shrine i ride i hear a voice but none are there the stalls are void the doors are wide the tapers burning fair fair gleams the snowy altar cloth the silver vessels sparkle clean the shrill bell rings the censer swings the solemn chaunts resound between sometimes on lowly mountain meres i find a magic bark i leap on board no helmsman steers i float till all is dark a gentle sound an awful light three angels bear the holy grail with folded feet in stoles of white on sleeping wings they sail ah blessed vision blood of god my spirit beats her mortal bars as down dark tides the glory slides and star-like mingles with the stars when on my goodly charger borne through dreaming towns i go the cock crows ere the christmas morn the streets are dumb with snow the tempest crackles on the leads and ringing springs from brand and mail but o'er the darker glory spreads and gills the driving hail i leave the plain i climb the height no branchy thicket shelter yields but blessed forms in whistling storms fly o'er waste fens and windy fields a maiden knight to me is given such hope i know not fear i yearn to breathe the airs of heaven that often meet me here i muse on joy that will not cease pure spaces clothed in living beams pure lilies of eternal peace whose odours haunt my dreams and stricken by an angel's hand this mortal armour that i wear this weight and size this heart and eyes are touched and turned to finest air the clouds are broken in the sky and through the mountain walls a rolling organ harmony swells up and shakes and falls then move the trees the copses nod wings flutter voices hover clear o just and faithful knight of god ride on the prize is near so pass i hostel hall and grange by bridge and ford by park and pale all armed i ride whate'er betide until i find the holy grail end of poem this recording is in the public domain flowers without fruit by john henry newman from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia flowers without fruit prune thou thy words the thoughts control that over thee swell and throng they will condense within thy soul and change to purpose strong but he who lets his feelings run in soft luxurious flow shrinks when hard service must be done and faints at every woe faith's meanest deed more favour bears where hearts and wills are weighed than brightest transports choicest prayers which bloom their hour and fade end of poem this recording is in the public domain santa filomena florence nightingale by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia santa filomena florence nightingale whenever a noble deed is wrought whenever is spoken a noble thought our hearts in glad surprise to higher levels rise the tidal wave of deeper souls into our inmost being rolls and lifts us unawares out of all meaner cares honour to those whose words or deeds 
thus help us in our daily needs and by their overflow raise us from what is low thus thought i as by night i read of the great army of the dead the trenches cold and damp the starved and frozen camp the wounded from the battle plain in dreary hospitals of pain the cheerless corridors the cold and stony floors lo in that house of misery a lady with a lamp i see pass through the glimmering gloom and flit from room to room and slow as if a dream of bliss the speechless sufferer turns to kiss her shadow as it falls upon the darkening walls as if a door in heaven should be opened and then closed suddenly the vision came and went the light shone and was spent on england's annals through the long hereafter of her speech and song that light its rays shall cast from portals of the past a lady with a lamp shall stand in the great history of the land a noble type of good heroic womanhood nor even shall be wanting here the palm the lily and the spear the symbols that of yore saint philomena bore end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the air by lucy larkham from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia in the air the scent of a blossom from eden the flower was not given to me but it freshened my spirit forever as it passed on its way to thee in my soul is a lingering music the song was not meant for me but i listen and listen and wonder to whom it can lovelier be the sounds and the scents that flow by us they cannot tell whither they go yet however it fails of its errand love makes the world sweeter i know i know that love never is wasted nor truth nor the breath of a prayer and the thought that goes forth as a blessing must live as a joy in the air the best of all god's blessings are caught upon the wing and then set free into the heaven of other hearts to sing our message brought no answer our dream did not come true but we have freshened weary lives in ways we never knew end of poem this recording is in the public domain sogarth a rune by john Banim from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia sogarth a rune am i the slave they say sogarth a rune since you did show the way sogarth a rune their slave no more to be while they would work with me old ireland's slavery sogarth a rune why not her poorest man sogarth arun try and do all he can sogarth arun her commands to fulfil of his own heart and will side by side with you still sogarth arun loyal and brave to you sogarth arun yet be not slave to you sogarth arun nor out of fear to you stand up so near to you Oh, out of fear to you, Sogarth Arun, who in the winter's night, Sogarth Arun, when the cold blast did bite, Sogarth Arun, came to my cabin door and on my earthen floor knelt by me, sick and poor, Sogarth Arun, who on the marriage day, Sogarth Arun, made the poor cabin gay, Sogarth Arun and did both laugh and sing making our hearts to ring at the poor christening sogarth arun who as friends only met sogarth arun 
never did flout me yet sogarth aroon and when my heart was dim gave while his eye did brim what i should give to him sogarth aroon och you and only you sogarth aroon and for this i was true to you sogarth aroon our love they'll never shake when for old ireland's sake we a true part did take sogarth aroon End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Vision of Sir Launfal by James Russell Lowell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator Sonia as the first prelude Jason in Canada as Sir Launfal Lian Yao as the leper and craig franklin as the second prelude the vision of sir launfal prelude to part first over his keys the musing organist beginning doubtfully and far away first lets his fingers wander as they list and builds a bridge from dreamland for his lay then as the touch of his loved instrument gives hope and fervour nearer draws his theme first guessed by faint auroral flushes sent along the wavering vista of his dream not only around our infancy doth heaven with all its splendours lie daily with souls that cringe and plot we sinais climb and know it not over our manhood bend the skies against our fallen and traitor lives the great winds utter prophecies with our faint hearts the mountain strives its arms outstretched the druid wood waits with its benedicide and to our ages drowsy blood still shouts the inspiring sea earth gets its prize for what earth gives us the beggar is taxed for a corner to die in the priest hath his fee who comes and shrives us we bargain for the graves we lie in at the devil's booth are all things sold each ounce of dross costs its ounce of gold for a cap and belts our lives we pay bubbles we buy with the whole soul's tasking tis heaven alone that is given away tis only god may be had for the asking no price is set on the lavish summer june may be had by the poorest comer and what is so rare as a day in june then if ever come perfect days then heaven tries earth if it be in tune and over it softly her warm ear lays whether we look or whether we listen we hear life murmur or see it glisten every clod feels a stir of might an instinct within it that reaches and towers and groping blindly above it for light climbs to a soul in grass and flowers the flush of life may well be seen thrilling back over hills and valleys the cowslip startles in meadows green the buttercup catches the sun in its chalice and there's never a leaf nor a blade to mean to be some happy creature's palace the little bird sits at his door in the sun a tilt like a blossom among the leaves and lets his illumined being overrun with the deluge of summer it receives his mate feels the eggs beneath her wings and the heart in her dumb breast flutters and sings he sings to the wide world and she to her nest in the nice ear of nature which song is the best now is the high tide of the year and whatever of life hath ebbed away comes flooding back with a ripply cheer into every bare inlet and creek and bay now the heart is so full that a drop overfills it we are happy now because god wills it no matter how barren the past may have been tis enough for us now that the leaves are green we sit in the warm shade and feel right well how the sap creeps up and the blossoms swell we may shut our eyes 
but we cannot help knowing that skies are clear and grass is growing the breeze comes whispering in our ear that dandelions are blossoming near that maize has sprouted that streams are flowing that the river is bluer than the sky that the robin is plastering his house hard by and if the breeze kept the good news back for other couriers we should not lack we could guess it all by yon heifer's lowing and hark how clear bold chanticleer warmed with the new wine of the year tells all in his lusty crowing joy comes grief goes we know not how everything is happy now everything is upward striving tis as easy now for the heart to be true as for grass to be green or skies to be blue tis the natural way of living who knows whither the clouds have fled in the unscarred heaven they leave no wake and the eyes forget the tears they have shed the heart forgets its sorrow and ache the soul partakes the season's youth and the sulphurous rifts of passion and woe lie deep neath a silence pure and smooth like burnt-out craters healed with snow what wonder if sir l'enfal now remember the keeping of his vow part first my golden spurs now bring to me and bring to me my richest mail for to-morrow i go over land and sea in search of the holy grail shall never a bed for me be spread nor shall a pillow be under my head till i begin my vow to keep here on the rushes i will sleep and perchance there may come a vision true ere day create the world anew slowly sir lawnful's eyes grew dim slumber fell like a cloud on him and into his soul the vision flew the crows flapped over by twos and threes in the pool drowsed the cattle up to their knees the little bird sang as if it were the one day of summer in all the year and the very leaves seemed to sing on the trees the castle alone in the landscape lay like an outpost of winter dull and gray twas the proudest hall in the north country and never its gates might opened be save to lord or lady of high degree summer besieged it on every side but the churlish stone her assaults defied she could not scale the chilly wall though around it for leagues her pavilions tall stretched left and right over the hills and out of sight green and broad was every tent and out of each a murmur went till the breeze fell off at night the drawbridge dropped with a surly clang and through the dark arch a charger sprang bearing sir lawnful the maiden knight in his gilded mail that flamed so bright it seemed the dark castle had gathered all those shafts the fierce sun had shot over its wall in a siege of three hundred summers long and binding them all in one blazing sheaf had cast them forth so young and strong and lightsome as a locust leaf sir lawnful flashed forth in his maiden mail to seek in all climes for the holy grail it was morning on hill and stream and tree and morning in the young knight's heart only the castle moodily rebuffed the gifts of the sunshine free and gloomed by itself apart the season brimmed all other things up full as the rain fills the pitcher plant's cup as sir lawnful made morn through the darksome gate he was ware of a leper crouched by the same who begged with his hand and moaned as he sate and a loathing over sir lawnful came the sunshine went out of his soul with a thrill the flesh neath his armour again shrink and crawl and midway its leap his heart stood still like a frozen waterfall for this man so foul and bent of stature rasped harshly against his dainty nature and seemed the one blot on the summer morn so he tossed him a piece of gold in scorn the leper raised not the gold from the dust better to me the poor man's crust better the blessing of the poor 
though i turn me empty from his door that is no true arms which the hand can hold he gives only the worthless gold who gives from a sense of duty but he who gives but a slender mite and gives to that which is out of sight that thread of the all-sustaining beauty which runs through all and doth all unite the hand cannot clasp the whole of his arms the heart outstretches its eager palms for a god goes with it and makes its store to the soul that was starving in darkness before prelude to part second down swept the chill wind from the mountain peak from the snow five thousand summers old on open wold and hilltop bleak it had gathered all the cold and whirled it like sleet on the wanderer's cheek it carried a shiver everywhere from the unleafed boughs and pastures bare the little brook heard it and built a roof neath which he could house him winter-proof all night by the white star's frosty gleams he groined his arches and matched his beams slender and clear were his crystal spars as the lashes of light that trimmed the stars he sculptured every summer delight in his halls and chambers out of sight sometimes his tinkling waters slipped down through a frost-leaf forest crypt long sparkling aisles of steel-stemmed trees mending to counterfeit a breeze sometimes the roof no fretwork knew but silvery mosses that downward grew sometimes it was carved in sharp relief with quaint arabesque of ice-fern leaf sometimes it was simply smooth and clear for the gladness of heaven to shine through and here he had caught the nodding bulrush tops and hung them thickly with diamond drops that crystalled the beams of moon and sun and made a star of every one no mortal builder's most rare device could match this winter palace of ice twas as if every image that mirrored lay in his depths serene through the summer's day each fleeting shadow of earth and sky lest the happy model should be lost sad been mimicked in fairy masonry by the elfin builders of the frost within the halls a song and laughter the cheeks of christmas glow red and jolly and sprouting is every corbel and rafter with lightsome green of ivory and holly through the deep gulf of the chimney wide wallows the yule logs roaring tide the broad flame pennons droop and flap and belly and tug as a flag in the wind like a locust shrills the imprisoned sap hunted to death in its galleries blind and swift little troops of silent sparks now pausing now scattering away as in fear go threading the soot forest tangled darks like herds of startled deer but the wind without was eager and sharp of sir lawnful's grey hair it makes a harp and rattles and rings the icy strings singing in dreary monotone a christmas carol of its own whose burden still as he might guess was shelterless 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 the voice of seneschal flared like a torch as he shouted the wanderer away from the porch and he sat in the gateway and saw all night the great hall fire so cheery and bold through the window slits of the castle old built out its piers of ruddy light against the drift of the cold part second there was never a leaf on bush or tree the bare boughs rattled shudderingly the river was dumb and could not speak for the weaver winter its shroud had spun a single curl on the tree-top bleak from his shining feathers shed off the cold sun again it was morning but shrunk and cold as if her veins were sapless and old and she rose up decrepitly for a last dim look at earth and sea sir lawnful turned from his own hard gale for another air in his earldom sate an old bent man worn out and frail he came back from seeking the holy grail little he recked of his earldom's loss no more on his surcoat was blazoned the cross 
but deep in his soul the sigh he bore the badge of the suffering and the poor sir launfal's raiment thin and spare was idle mail against the barbed air for it was just at the christmas time so he mused as he sat of a sunnier clime and sought for a shelter from cold and snow in the light and warmth of long ago he sees the snake-like caravan crawl o'er the edge of the desert black and small then nearer and nearer till one by one he can count the camels in the sun as over the red-hot sands they pass to where in its slender necklace of grass the little spring laughed and leapt in the shade and with its own self like an infant played and waved its signal of palms for christ's sweet sake i beg an alms the happy camels may reach the spring but sir launfal sees only the gruesome thing the leper lank as the rain blanched bone that cowers beside him a thing as lone and white as the ice isles of northern seas in the desolate horror of his disease and sir launfal said i behold in thee an image of him who died on the tree thou also hast had thy crown of thorns thou also hast had the world's buffets and scorns and to thy life were not denied the wounds in the hands and feet and side mild mary's son acknowledge me behold through him i give to thee then the soul of the leper stood up in his eyes and looked at sir launfal and straightway he remembered in what a haughtier guise he had flung an arm to leprosy when he girt his young life up in gilded mail and set forth in search of the holy grail the heart within him was ashes and dust he parted in twain his single crust he broke the ice on the streamlet's brink and gave the leper to eat and drink twas a mouldy crust of coarse brown bread twas water out of a wooden bowl Yet with fine wheaten bread was the leper fed, and t'was red wine he drank with his thirsty soul. As Sir Launfal mused with a downcast face, a light shone round about the place. The leper no longer crouched at his side, but stood before him glorified, shining and tall and fair and straight as the pillar that stood by the beautiful gate, himself the gate whereby men can enter the temple of god in man his words were shed softer than leaves from the pine and they fell on sir launfal as snows on the brine that mingle their softness and quiet in one with the shaggy unrest they float down upon and the voice that was softer than silence said lo it is i be not afraid in many climes without avail thou hast spent thy life for the holy grail behold it is here this cup which thou didst fill at the streamlet for me but now this crust is my body broken for thee this water his blood that died on the tree this holy supper is kept indeed in what so we share with another's need not what we give but what we share for the gift without the giver is bare who gives himself with his alms feeds three himself his hungering neighbour and me sir launfal awoke as from a swound the grail in my castle here is found hang my idle armor up on the wall let it be the spider's banquet hall he must be fenced with stronger mail who would seek and find the holy grail the castle gate stands open now and the wanderer is welcome to the hall as the hangbird is to the elm tree bough no longer scowl the turrets tall the summer's long siege at last is o'er when the first poor outcast went in at the door she entered with him in disguise and mastered the fortress by surprise there is no spot she loves so well on ground she lingers and smiles there the whole year round the meanest serf on sir launfal's land has hall and bower at his command 
and there's no poor man in the north country but his lord of the earldom as much as he end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Sister of Charity by Gerald Joseph Griffin From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 4 The Higher Life, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Sister of Charity She once was a lady of honour and wealth Bright glowed in her features the roses of health Her vesture was blended of silk and of gold and her motion shook perfume from every fold. Joy reveled around her, love shone at her side, and gay was her smile as the glance of a bride. And light was her step in the mirth-sounding hall when she heard of the daughters of Vincent de Paul. She felt in her spirit the summons of grace that called her to live for her suffering race. And heedless of pleasure, of comfort, of home, rose quickly like Mary, and answered, I come. She put from her person the trappings of pride, and passed from her home with the joy of a bride, nor wept at the threshold as onward she moved, for her heart was on fire in the cause it approved. Lost ever to fashion, to vanity lost, that beauty that once was the song and the toast, no more in the ballroom that figure we meet, But gliding at dusk to the wretch's retreat. Forgot in the halls is that high-sounding name, For the sister of charity blushes at fame. Forgot are the claims of her riches and birth, For she barters for heaven the glory of earth. Those feet that to music could gracefully move Now bear her alone on the mission of love. Those hands that once dangled the perfume and gem Are tending the helpless, or lifted for them. That voice that once echoed the song of the vain Now whispers relief to the bosom of pain. And the hair that was shining with diamond and pearl Is wet with the tears of the penitent girl. Her downbed, a pallet, her trinkets, a bead, Her luster, one taper, that serves her to read her sculpture the crucifix nailed by her bed her paintings one print of the thorn-crowned head her cushion the pavement that wearies her knees her music the psalm or the sigh of disease the delicate lady lives mortified there and the feast is forsaken for fasting and prayer yet not to the service of heart and of mind are the cares of that heaven-minded virgin confined. Like him whom she loves, to the mansions of grief she hastes with the tidings of joy and relief. She strengthens the weary, she comforts the weak, and soft is her voice in the ear of the sick. Where want and affliction on mortals attend, the sister of charity there is a friend. Unshrinking where pestilence scatters his breath, Like an angel she moves mid the vapours of death, Where rings the loud musket and flashes the sword, Unfearing she walks, for she follows her lord. How sweetly she bends o'er each plague-tainted face, With looks that are lighted with holiest grace. How kindly she dresses each suffering limb, For she sees in the wounded, the image of him. Behold her, ye worldly, behold her, ye vain, who shrink from the pathway of virtue and pain, who yield up to pleasure your nights and your days, forgetful of service, forgetful of praise. Ye lazy philosophers, self-seeking men, ye fireside philanthropists, great at the pen. How stands in the balance your eloquence weighed With the life and the deeds of that high-born maid? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What I Live For by George Linnaeus Banks 
from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia what i live for i live for those who love me whose hearts are kind and true for heaven that smiles above me and waits my spirit too for all the ties that bind me for all the tasks assigned me and bright hopes left behind me and good that i can do i live to learn their story who've suffered for my sake to emulate their glory and follow in their wake bards patriots martyrs sages the noble of all ages whose deeds crown history's pages and time's great volume make i live to hold communion with all that is divine to feel there is a union twixt nature's heart and mine to profit by affliction reap truth from fields of fiction and wiser from conviction fulfil each grand design i live to hail that season by gifted minds foretold when man shall rule by reason and not alone by gold when man to man united and every wrong thing righted the whole world shall be lighted as eden was of old i live for those who love me whose hearts are kind and true for heaven that smiles above me and waits my spirit too for the cause that lacks assistance for the wrong that needs resistance for the future in the distance and the good that i can do end of poem this recording is in the public domain if we had but a day by mary low dickinson from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia if we had but a day we should fill the hours with the sweetest things if we had but a day we should drink alone at the purest springs in our upward way we should love with a lifetime's love in an hour if the hours were few we should rest not for dreams but for fresher power to be and to do we should guide our wayward or wearied wills by the clearest light we should keep our eyes on the heavenly hills if they lay in sight we should trample the pride and the discontent beneath our feet we should take whatever a good god send with a trust complete we should waste no moments in weak regret if the day were but one if what we remember and what we forget went out with the sun we should be from our clamorous selves set free to work or to pray and to be what the father would have us be if we had but a day end of poem this recording is in the public domain abu ben adam by lee hunt from the world's best poetry volume four the higher life part one read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator craig franklin as abu ben adam and lian yao as the angel abu ben adam abu ben adam may his tribe increase awoke one night from a deep dream of peace and saw within the moonlight in his room making it rich and like a lily in bloom an angel writing in a book of gold exceeding peace had made ben adam bold and to the presence in the room he said what writest thou the vision raised its head and with a look made of all sweet accord answered the names of those who love the lord and is mine one said abu nay not so replied the angel abu spoke more low but cheerly still and said i pray thee then write me as one that loves his fellow-men the angel wrote and vanished the next night it came again with a great wakening light and showed the names whom love of god had blessed and lo ben adam's name led all the rest 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.